All right, so we're going to talk a bit about articulations. Uh, so articulations we can kind of commonly think of are the joints of the body. Uh, so the way are the areas of our body where we're bending, we're, we're moving bone by bone um, because of the, the muscle contraction, which we'll talk about in the next section. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, three main categories of joints. Uh, the first one is the fibrous joint. So a fibrous joint, kind of as its name implies, it's, it's very fibrous, uh, meaning it's a strong joint. It's composed of thick connective tissue. So it's, it's filled with thick connective tissue. And one of the main um, things about these types of joints is that they're not very movable. So these are very, very tight joints that don't move very much. Um, when we think about fibrous joints, generally what we're talking about are the different sutures of the skull. Uh, so when we're talking about the sutures of the skull, we're talking about those that are going to be um, the joint between the two uh, parietal bones, uh, between the parietal bone and the occipital bone, between the occipital or the parietal and the, the temporal bones. Um, so we're talking about really just those bones being connected to each other. We see the same types of things in the sutures in the bones of the face. Uh, so the nasal bones connected to each other, the nasal and the, the, the ethmoid and the sphenoid. Um, most of the bones of the skull um, is what we're talking about um, when we're talking about fibrous joints. Now, we're not talking about the movement of the jaw, for example. That's not a fibrous joint, but we're talking about the sutures and the rest of the skull and, and much of the face. <clears throat> the second type of joint are cartilaginous joints. So our cartilaginous joints, as its name implies, is composed of cartilage. And so these joints, uh, rather than being not very movable, uh, they're slightly more movable. Um, so we can just say slightly more movable. Uh, they're still not all that movable, though. Not very movable, but, but more than our fibrous joints. Uh, so these joints are, for example, things like the joints between our costal cartilage, uh, which is in the rib cage, and the ribs themselves. Um, so if we think about, um, here's our rib, and then we have my shorthand version of the, the sternum here, the little xiphoid process, which is kind of... Uh, so remember that we have our, our ribs here, our ribs are coming around here, uh, shorthand here, and then we have cartilage that's connecting the ribs uh, to the sternum. So that is one location of some cartilaginous joints, um, are those that are connecting the ribs to the sternum, um, also <clears throat> between the costal cartilage or the costal cartilage and the ribs themselves. So. Uh, those are two areas where we have cartilaginous joints, so it's where we have cartilage connecting two bones, for example. Uh, we also see that in the vertebral column, so we have the cartilage between the different vertebrae. So if you think about the bodies of the vertebrae, <coughs> uh, then we've got this kind of cartilage between the vertebrae here, and then we have another vertebrae, and then we've got the cartilage between the vertebrae and another vertebrae here. So if we're, we're looking at the vertebrae, you can see that it's not very movable. We're not able to just very easily bend uh, our spine, for example, our vertebrae. Um, but there is some slight movement to it compared to our fibrous, which, you know, we, don't, we know we don't move many bones in the actual skull. Uh, the third type of articulation, the third type of joint, are synovial joints. Now, synovial joints are those that we think of most often when we think of joints, and these are the most movable. Uh, so these contain a joint capsule. Uh, with fluid in it. Um, and then we also have the ends of the bones are coated, coated with cartilage. So they're protecting both ends, and then we have this kind of capsule in between. Uh, it's often these are often supported by ligaments. Uh, 
uh, which are a type of connective tissue that's going to connect bone to bone. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. So some examples of areas where we see synovial joints. Um, some examples would be like the shoulder joint. Um, so something that's, that's freely movable. Um, oftentimes when we think of synovial joints, we can think of something that's a ball and socket. Uh, so we have kind of the ball and then we have the socket, <clears throat> whatever type of bone this is. I'm just drawing for example. Um, we have this kind of capsule in the in-between area here. We can have a ligament here connecting the bone and the bone. Um, and then this is able to kind of freely move around. Um, so we can think of our elbow uh, joint, for example, uh, our shoulder joint, our knee joint, <clears throat> our hip joint. Um, so I can write those down. Shoulder joint, our elbow, knee, hip. All of these things that we can move very freely. Uh, this would also be like the jaw. Uh, the joint in the jaw is more freely moving, unlike our fibrous joints otherwise. So I do want to take a moment to take a closer look at the synovial joint here. So these are two images of uh, synovial joints. And I want to take a look at, and you should be familiar with, some of the details of a synovial joint. So some of the things that you need to be able to identify in a typical synovial joint, because this makes up the most uh, joints of the body, are the bones, first of all, so you should be able to identify that there's a bone on the top and a bone on the bottom, depending on, you know, top and bottom, of course, are relative, but uh, in these illustrations, there's a bone at the top and the bottom, so we have two bones that are interacting, which, of course, is what we're talking about when we talk about joints. We're, we're joining two bones, whether or not it's a fibrous joint, a cartilaginous joint, or a synovial joint, we're, we're connecting two bones in some way. Uh, so in the synovial joint, we have those two bones. In a synovial joint, we also have a synovial membrane, that's illustrated very well down here. Uh, so we have this membrane on the inside, and it's on the inside of the articular capsule here. Uh, so we have this kind of capsule, which is this whole area here. The articular capsule encompasses this, this whole area here. And then within it, we have the synovial membrane, which is the tissue, this actual membrane, membranous uh, tissue, this kind of layer of tissue that's going to um, be a part of kind of this fluid capsule area. Uh, so we have the actual capsule that's made up of tissue, and then within that we have the synovial membrane, which is on either side here, and then that is continuing on. So we have the synovial membrane on what's in this illustration, the right side, and then on the left side, and those areas are um, working with the articular cartilage. So we have our synovial membrane, which then is connected to our articular cartilage, which is going to be on the ends of both bones. So that's going to protect both bones um, from wear over time. Uh, so we have the articular cartilage on the one bone, then we have the synovial membrane again, and then we have the articular cartilage on the other bone. And then within that, uh, we have our synovial fluid. Uh, so in here, we have all of the synovial fluid, and we can see a similar thing up here at the top. Uh, so we have articular cartilage on both bones here. And then we have our joint capsule with our synovial membrane. Up here it's called synovial lining. Um, but we have the capsule with our synovial membrane or synovial lining as it's indicated here. Um, so this whole area here is, is the, the joint cavity. So this whole cavity, this whole space. And uh, we have the capsule and then the cavity is in the inside. And then the inside is where we have the articular capsule or we have the uh, rather synovial membrane, the articular cartilage in here, and then we have the synovial fluid. <clears throat> now, other things that you should be familiar with, which is why we have both uh, illustrations here, are one, this bursa. Uh, so I'm going to actually kind of erase this area here so we can see it better. And the bursa is in this top illustration, not on the bottom. So a uh, bursa is this blue thing here. And what this is, is it's kind of an additional layer of protection. Uh, so it's kind of another um, chunk of cartilage, uh, fluidy um, pillow uh, that's within the joint. So it's going to protect the joint in various areas. Uh, so that's the bursa. And then in this upper illustration here, we have both tendon and ligament. Uh, so I have already mentioned a ligament. Uh, remember I mentioned that uh, ligaments are connective tissue. that connect 
bone to bone. So whenever we say we have a ligament or maybe someone has a torn ligament, it is something that's connecting one bone to another bone. So that would be a ligament. So our connective tissue is very, very strong connective tissue holding things together. So uh, you can think, for example, this might be the knee joint here. And so we have these ligaments that are going from the upper portion of the leg to the bottom portion of the leg to try to make sure that we hold that together. And we use our legs very often. Um, so it's very strong and very important to have those ligaments intact. Uh, we also see over here on the left-hand side a tendon. And tendons are also connective tissue, also very strong. But tendons are connective tissue that connect muscle to bone. So you can see here, if we look at the illustration of the tendon, you can see it's connected at the bottom to the bone. But if we continue up, it actually turns into a muscle. Um, and when we look at the um, structure of a muscle, uh, each individual kind of chunk of muscle fibers is wrapped in a connective tissue. And then we have chunks and chunks and chunks, uh, more and more and more of these connective tissue wrapped um, sections coming together that are then wrapped in a, another layer of connective tissue. And all of these connective tissue on connective tissue on connective tissue are all going to come together uh, toward the end of the muscle to form this tendon. And then that tendon is connected to uh, the bone, uh, the bone that's, it's, that the muscle is going to assist in moving. So that's just a quick um, lecture, quick summarization of some information about our actual joints, our articulation. So you should know the differences between the ligaments and the tendon, or the difference between a ligament and tendon, and what makes them the same. They're similar. And then you should know the three different types of articulation. So the, the fibrous joint, the cartilaginous joint, and the synovial joint. And you should know those items that I indicated on the synovial joint specifically. And you should be able to give examples of these different types of joints.